Hello everyone and welcome today to this presentation of what to do once you're in the trade. Now this is a very common question. I know it's hard for some people to believe and understand, but many people will get into a trade and then not know what to do once they've entered. Here's a perfect example of how people trade and how this may have even happened to you. As we look here, this is an older uh, example uh, in the LA Times of the Fed. They, now it says here, the breaking news, the Fed hikes the key interest rate for the first time in nearly a decade. So today the Federal Reserve rates its benchmark short-term interest rate for the first time in nine and a half years, seven years to the day after lowering the rate to near zero. So in other words, this news comes out and it should mean that it's fairly good for the market. In fact, if we look at a chart of the industrials, the market actually soared on that information. Now, the way most people trade is they figure that's good news. And so it must be good for the market. We're probably going to make new highs. It looks as if we made a bottom right here. So I'm going to get in that stock I was very interested in, or maybe I'll buy the ETF, the spiders, something, just because we should be in a nice uptrend in the market. So you enter, and then this happens, okay? Most likely you would have been stopped out. You ask yourself, boy, that was wrong. What did I do wrong, or what do I do? And so you get out of the trade, and then it's right back up to where it started again just a week later. So this is why most traders say, what do I do now? I mean, the market is not behaving the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to show you some great, great tips today, and you can start using them as early as uh, once we can uh, finish and uh, once you uh, have uh, finished this presentation, you can start using them as early as today. I'm going to share with you exactly what to do once you're in the trade. And this will be part of your trading plan, regardless of what market you trade, regardless of what strategy you trade. Okay, so welcome once again. My name is Stephen Primo. I'm the president and founder of Specialist Trading. If you're new to my weekly webinars, we are all about educating you, as you'll see in just a few moments. That, in my opinion, is the only way, the only way a trader will become consistent. OK, it's not by getting the perfect system. It's not by getting uh, the perfect teacher or spending tens of thousands of dollars per, for the perfect method. There are tons and tons of traders. In fact, myself included, when I first started trading, who went by that conventional wisdom of thinking that's what's going to make you successful. And it doesn't work. OK, if that were true, if those things really did work, then it would be the opposite of the statistics. The statistics say that 80 percent of all traders ultimately fail. OK, so if these things were true, going to the ultimate chat room, the ultimate trading guru, the ultimate system, then 80 percent of most traders would win and be, be successful. But it's the opposite. Now, I've been trading for 40 years and I know what works in terms of consistency and I know what doesn't. I started trading on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I was on the trading floor for a total of 16 years. Nine of those years, I was a specialist. A specialist made markets in roughly about 50 or 60 stocks. So if you wanted to buy or sell a particular stock, you had to go to the trader who specialized in that. Now, I did that for nine years. I traded through the crash of 1987 and the bull market that followed. And I left the floor in the 90s to manage money and also to teach what I've put together here, what I've accumulated in my last four decades of trading. So about eight years ago, I teamed up with Pro Trader Strategies and we formed Specialist Trading, which, as I stated in the beginning, is purely and simply an educational company. We want to put the power back in your hands with all the things that I've accumulated so that you can make your own trading decisions, not have to rely on going to a chat room or a trading room, not have to rely on listening to news so that you can understand what to do with the market, not have to rely on the perfect system or strategy, but rely on sound fundamental information that has stood the test of time and then mold it and fit it to meet your needs so that you are in charge. OK, this is what we do at Specialist Trading. Now, before we begin with these uh, great techniques I'm going to be sharing with you today, uh, we are required to show you this. So please take a moment to view our disclaimer. I'm going to show you these performance results so that you'll know what to do once you're in the trade. But please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of the results I'm about to share with you will be repeated in the future. So please take a moment to view our disclaimer and then we shall begin today's presentation. OK, I'd also like to invite each and every one of you to follow us on Twitter. You may want to copy our handle there. It's abbreviation for Specialist Trading, at S-P-C-L-S-T-T-R-A-D-G. I post different information on a daily basis, anywhere from signals that our strategies have generated to little bits of wisdom along the way. So feel free to follow us on Twitter. Now, as I stated a few minutes ago, we're not about 
force feeding you signals. We're not about saying that we have the perfect strategy that generates thousands and thousands of percent every year. I know you've gone to some websites and even some webinars that do these things, but we don't believe in that. That's not our philosophy. As I've stated uh, many times, and even just a few minutes ago, when I first started trading, I struggled tremendously. I did the same thing probably 99.9% .9 of all traders do. I, I read all the material. I traded all the conventional wisdom, support and resistance, volume, Fibonacci, uh, Elliott Wave. I looked at news. I had, you know, if anyone needed to know all this stuff, it was someone who was making markets in roughly 50 stocks. I knew all the earnings reports to all my stocks, everything I was trading. And guess what? I couldn't make a dime. None of that worked for me in terms of consistency. Sure, every once in a while I'd have a great trade. Maybe, you know, it would last a couple of weeks, maybe even a month. But then it would be that one trade where I'd give everything back. So I was lucky enough to have mentors who saw how much I was struggling. These were specialists themselves on the floor. And they turned my trading around. And by teaching me the same things, I teach to all of our students in virtually 110 countries around the world in every state in the United States. So what they taught me is what I truly feel has been able to sustain me for going on 40 years now. And hopefully it will be able to sustain you. So once again, our goal is not to force feed you signals. Our goal is not to tell you what the perfect time frame is. It's not to tell you what the perfect market is, what the perfect system is. We don't believe in that. In fact, it's our belief that if anyone tells you that, you should run. Our goal is to provide all of our thousands of members with sound fundamental education that have stood the test of time and then work with you, mentor you, so that you can mold it to fit your needs, okay? This is the same edge that was able to turn my trading around, and this is the same edge we teach to all of our students, okay? So I'm gonna give you a few of those edges today in today's class, but since this is an educational class, I want you to ask as many questions as possible, but please wait till the very end of the presentation to ask your questions. Many times if we stop for each question, well, uh, this, this short 45 minute presentation will turn into five hours. So we can speed things up if we just wait to the very end. Oftentimes, if you wait for the next slide, your question is answered. The only question I will answer is the most common one. And that is, is this being recorded? Yes, it is. All of our presentations are recorded. So if you're having difficulty seeing or hearing things, or if you have to leave early, you can uh, request a link to this uh, recording from ProTrader Strategies, okay? All right, so remember, if you happen to join us late, please kindly wait till the very end to ask any question. And let's begin. Now, most traders enter into a trade, and then once they're having difficulty, they always ask the same question, because I've gotten this question even from traders who've been trading a long time, and I always get this question in the webinars and in emails. And that is the one question in all actuality that you should never ask. And that question is, what do I do now? I mean, basically, as a trader, as someone who is using their hard-earned money, why would you ever ask that, okay? Because basically what you're saying to the community is, I have no idea what to do. Even though I've studied, I'm using my money, which I've earned and I've saved, I don't know what to do. So tell me what to do. And that's basically, you're giving your power away. You're letting someone else make the decisions for you. And it's really silly. I mean, trading is a, is a profession. It's not a hobby. It's not something you should do part-time and think, well, I'll make a little extra money. It's just having fun on the side. It's not gambling at all. So why would you gamble with your money by asking this silly question? I mean, think of it. It's a profession like no other, I mean, uh, it, it, where you're actually using what you've earned. Would a airline pilot, while he's in the middle of the air, ask his pilot or his co-pilot or the uh, people sitting uh, in, the, uh, in the plane, would he say, well, what do I do now? Okay. Or would a brain surgeon in the middle of an operation turn and say, well, what do I do now? But this is the way traders trade. You know, they'll be in something they don't know, have any idea what to do once they've entered into the trade. It's not going their way. And they always ask, what do I do? What do you think of the markets? Okay. What do you think I should do? What, what's the perfect time frame to trade? What's the perfect market to trade? It's basically another way of saying, what do I do? You should never ask that question. You should have a plan so that you know what you're going to do. And you'll never ask anyone. I haven't asked anyone what to do in 38, 40 years because I have a plan. I'm not saying that it works every time, but at least I know and I'm responsible for my own decisions. That's how you become a consistent trader, not by asking others, what do I do? What should I do? So here's what I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna teach you these techniques today so that you'll never have to ask that question. In fact, I'm gonna tell you what are the only questions you should ever ask. All right, these are the four questions you should only ask, you should ever ask yourself. And they are question number one. 
Am I on the right side of the market? Right? Now, you should ask yourself this prior to even entering the trade. Now, I don't care if you trade one of my strategies or one of your own. I don't care if it's based on Fibonacci. I don't care if it's based on the full moon. You should always ask yourself this question prior to entry. Am I on the right side? Now, the trouble is most people don't know if they're on the right side. They just blindly enter into a trade. And I'm going to show you the easiest and the most powerful way for finding if you're on the right side. Okay, I'm going to start by looking at some older charts today just for, uh, you know, educational purposes. And then we'll conclude with uh, charts that are as recent as this past week. As we look at this older chart here in MCK, someone would say, well, I want to buy here. Okay, it's based on my uh, proprietary strategy that I developed myself. Well, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to ask yourself first, are you on the right side? Most people have no idea. And looking at this chart here, it's not giving us any clue because basically we've just been going sideways for the past month. But there is a way, a simple, powerful way to find out if you're on the right side. And that's by adding one tool. And that's the 50 period moving average. And you ask yourself, where is the majority of price closing in relation to the 50 period moving average? If it's closing below, then the only action you should be taking is that of a seller. Your strategy, whatever it's based on, should be only generating sell signals. Those are the signals you should be taking. But if it's above the way it is right now and you want to buy, well, yes, you're on the right side. Now, is this guaranteeing you a winning profitable trade? Absolutely not. Nothing guarantees you a winning profitable trade. We're just trying to put the odds in our favor. That's why most traders fail, because the odds are not in their favor. These things we've taught and learned about, myself included, volume, Fibonacci, support and resistance, there's no consistency in those things. If there were, then the majority of traders would trade that way. All right. Only things that are consistent are, first of all, are you on the right side? And if you're entering above the 50 period moving average, yes, you're on the right side. But you've only put some odds in your favor. It's still not guaranteeing you anything. OK, so now that we know we're on the right side, how can we increase our odds for consistency even more? Well, question number two is we have to find out where we're going to protect ourselves, because as I just said, there's no guarantee this is going to be a winner. So what if we're wrong? Where are we going to place our initial stop or where are we going to have a mental stop? So we know if it gets to a certain point, where are we getting now? I can't tell you how many times so many traders I know of that trade without stops or at least some type of idea of where to get out. So many traders I know of say, well, I'm going to get out here. And then once it gets to that point, they come up with a, a tons of excuses to say, well, you know what? It doesn't feel the way I thought it would feel. So I'm going to stay in the trade a little bit longer. I'll give myself a little bit more room. So there's no real uh, benchmark in place to get out of when you're wrong. You're always you know, making judgment calls as you go along. But you have to have a benchmark. You have to have an initial level of where you're going to get out if you're wrong, because there is a good chance you still may be wrong, even though you're putting the odds in your favor. So at Specialist Trading, you know, in our courses and our classes, we have tons of different places to place your stop, aggressive areas, conservative areas. But we're just going to start with probably one of the most you know, traditional and easiest way, just the last short term low, which would be right here. OK, it's just a very uh, conventional way to place your stop. It's very generic. And so let's just say you decided to place your stop here. You said that if we go below these lows here, where we made some type of a you know, bottom, then most likely the trade is not going to work. We're below the 50 period moving average. So uh, that would be a good place to get out altogether. OK, now what you want to do is ask yourself, well, how much are you risking? Now, we're looking at stocks here, but it wouldn't matter if we were looking at currency pairs, futures, commodities. You always want to ask yourself how many points. In this case, it would be roughly a total of five points. So you have to ask yourself, am I willing to lose however many shares, however many contracts I'm trading? Can I afford, according to my account size, according to my risk parameters and my emotional parameters, can I afford to lose five points? And if the answer is yes, OK, then we can move on to question number three then. And that is, what is my profit target? You see, this is what most people think of in the beginning. Where am I going to get out? Well, boy, it's going to go up to here. I'm going to be so rich. I'm going to make money. And, you know, the first thing you have to do is think of where am I going to get out if I lose? That's the most important question. Then once you decide, can you take that risk? Then you decide where you want to get out. Now, most people say, well, you know what, Steve? OK, if I'm looking at it that way, I don't know where to get out. OK, I, I have no idea. Now, a number of strategies and systems, you know, come with exit points. But here's a good way to come up with an exit point. A lot of traders are always concerned with risk reward ratio. 
In other words, they want to make sure that they'll make more than they're risking. So an easy, very simple, once again, generic way to do that is simply to double the amount of points you're willing to risk. So in this particular example, we're willing to risk five points, so let's just double it. So we're going to make 10 points by risking five. That's a good one to two risk reward ratio. And so our exit will be 10 points higher at 201. Are we guaranteed we're going to get there? No, but you see now how we're putting together a plan so that now we are in charge of our trading destiny. Not someone in the chat room or trading room or not relying on some news event. We're in charge. This is what we're trying to do at Specialist Trading, give you the information so that you never have to ask that question, what do I do? You now know what you're going to do. You're going to exit at 201. If you're wrong, you're going to be exiting five points lower at 186. Okay, that's, that's it. It's that simple. All right. Now, here's the last question you should ever ask yourself. How do I protect my profits? Now, what do we mean by that? Well, many times you'll see things start to go your way and all of a sudden something will happen. You know, uh, the markets will change. The environment will change. And then what was looking like a nice profit, things were going your way, turns into a disaster. And now it's a loss. So you want to protect what you had. So here's a good, simple way to do that. Now that we know where we're exiting, up 10 points at 201, we want to measure and see where the halfway point would be, the 50% level. Why? Because many times we'll see price get up to that halfway level and then turn around and turn into a loss. So here's what this suggestion calls for. If we get to the 50% level, halfway to the distance of our exit, then we want to move our stop to unchanged, okay? So this way, if things turn disastrous and all of a sudden the trend changes, well, this nice profit of five points doesn't turn into a loss of five points. It will turn into a break-even trade. So we've protected ourselves. So once it gets roughly to the 50% level, and this is not a magic number. It can be, you know, uh, 50 cents below, 50 cents above. It's not, you know, written in stone so that, well, I can't move my stop up until it hits that exact number. Remember, we're, we're not a systematic company. We give you room and leverage to work with our, our suggestions and our rules. Remember, you're in charge. We're not telling you how to trade the way so many other websites do. We don't believe in that. We're giving you tips and techniques that have stood the test of time and letting them mold to meet your needs. So if you want to move your stop up, if it's half point before that 50% level, that's perfectly okay. The point is we want to put you in the consciousness, the awareness of protecting yourself. So many traders, how many traders do you know, yourself included, that have had a nice profit and it turns into a loss? I can hear so many traders saying this right now. Yeah, the other day I was, uh, you know, doing great and then that news came out and they really uh, screwed me over and I lost a lot of money. I would have been right except the market turned around. Don't become a victim. This is the way traders always give themselves an out. They love to give themselves an out. They love to blame it on someone or something else. That's why so many traders go to chat rooms and trading rooms, because when things don't work out, they can always blame them. That's why traders love to depend on the news, because when the news doesn't come out the way you thought it would, then you can always blame that. OK, as a trader. You should never blame anyone. You're in charge. This is how you become consistent by making your own uh, decisions and by taking responsibility. So we give you all this information so that you can take responsibility for your trades. So by going up roughly about halfway, you're going to take responsibility and move this stop to unchanged. And therefore, you can't blame anyone because it's your decision. All right. And at the very least, you'll just break even. So now once we've done this, we have an order to exit exit trade at 201 with a 10 point gain. We've moved our stop up to unchanged. So if things don't work out, at least we won't lose any money. Now, what do we do? Now, the only thing left to do is watch the trade unfold. You see how easy trading is? You don't have to have 10 screens in front of you with all different, you know, data services telling you what to do and what the options are and what the news is on Bloomberg and all this stuff. That's silly. I have one screen in front of me. That's all I look at. That's, that's all I've looked at for 40 years. I don't watch any news on TV. If, if I'm watching anything, it's I'm usually just listening to music or, uh, or watching a movie because trading, if you're doing it correctly, is very boring. It's it's you know, you follow the rules it's like fishing. You just simply follow the rules. You cast your line. You simply wait for a catch. And that's it. If you're trading correctly, it's extremely boring. If you're trading incorrectly, you're flustered. You don't know what to do. You're, you're, you're looking around. You're asking yourself, what do I do now? Boy, what's this news going to come out? I'm waiting. You know, there's too many things going on. 
That is the incorrect way to trade. Once you're trading correctly, it's very boring. There's not a lot of stuff going on, and you're waiting a lot, okay? So now we just wait. So let's see what happened to this trade. Well, so far, we've got a nice little gain here. We've moved our stop to, uh, to unchanged, and we simply wait. And about a week or so later, we exit with a 10-point gain. It's that simple. We didn't listen to any news. We didn't have to rely on anybody in a chat room or a trading room. We didn't have to look at Fibonacci or the institutions or the volume. Trading is simple when you only listen to one thing. That's the chart and the market in front of you. The only trouble is none of us have ever been taught to do that, myself included. I was always taught to listen to what the institutions were doing. Look at volume. Look at, uh, you know, uh, the um, uh, Elliott Wave. You know, look at all that stuff. It's silly. It didn't work for me. And once again, if it works so great, why do 80% of all traders fail? It's because there's no consistency in this. So try to listen to the market, make your trading a lot simpler and a lot cheaper. You won't have to pay for all these silly services and you'll be on that road to consistency. All right, let's show you some more examples, all right? Here's another example and this time it's to the downside. Let's say you're a trader, you love, uh, you know, uh, uh, technical analysis, you love trend lines, support and resistance. You say, Steve, I don't listen to the news. I don't look at all those things. I just look at trend lines. You know, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on this great guy I love who, who looks at trend lines, okay? And that really helps me. All right, so what's your trade here? Well, let's say, let's say you're looking at this example, an older chart in Tiffany, and you say, I want to buy here. Okay, what's the rationale? Well, I like to look at trend lines. I like technical analysis, and we've really broken out of a short-term downtrend, all right? Now, the chat room I go to says that this is major support right here. This is where all the institutions are buying, and we've made a double bottom. And so these are two signs telling me to buy, all right? All right, now listen to how this trader just spoke. What was the decision to uh, buy this stock based off of? It's all based off outside sources, someone or something else telling you how to trade. Remember, we want to listen to the market. And what is the market telling us? Are we on the right side? Well, what is the market telling us? Am I on the right side of the market? Absolutely not. Why? Because we are below the 50 period moving average. So the market is telling us, you know, I'm not performing up to scale here, so I wouldn't be buying. Now, sure, you may have a nice bounce every once in a while, but we're trying to put the odds in your favor. We're trying to be consistent. Consistency is about a numbers game. It's not guaranteeing you that every trade is going to be a winner and that you're going to be right every time. It's just about putting the odds in your favor. And if you are buying below the 50 period moving average, the odds are absolutely not in your favor that you're going to be making money. The, the odds are actually better in your favor if you're looking to sell. So let's see how this trader would have uh, uh, worked out on this particular trade. Remember, you're not going to buy, but had you uh, bought this particular issue, look what would have happened. This is the way most traders trade. And they say, well, you know, I was right because, uh, you know, the stock did eventually go up. So I was really right. But, uh, you know, that news that came out really uh, stopped me out. And they're the ones that really uh, are the ones to blame, not me. That's silly. You're to blame because you're on the wrong side. Now, sure, the, the stock did go up, but you can still look at it from the sell side because we're still below the 50 period moving average. So you can still use the same techniques. There's nothing wrong with using trend lines, but in this case, look at trend lines to sell. Now you have a short-term uh, uptrend here. We're still below, the majority closes are below. So look what happened. Using the same context here, this is where you should be selling. You shouldn't have ever thought about buying. You should look to sell. So here's your sell, all right? Now we go to question number two. Where do I place my initial stop? Now, you could place it way back here if you wanted to be very, uh, you know, uh, conservative, if you really wanted to give yourself a lot of room. But using a standard top here could have been this place to place your stop. Remember, we're just talking about generic. We have tons of different uh, ideas and, and uh, styles in which to place your stop uh, at specialist trading. But we're just using the very common ones right now. All right. So we want to enter roughly here and we place our stop here. So we're what is the uh, price target? What am I going to get out now? Now that I know how much uh, uh, I'm going to be risking, well, we're risking three points. Once again, using just a very generic way to exit, we'll just double that. We'll put our profit down six points. So we're risking three to make six, a one to two risk reward ratio. Now, now I, I'm just saying this is a very generic way. We're not giving you a full-fledged strategy, 
Uh, we have tons of strategies that are based on entirely different parameters such as this. We're just giving you a very standard way to trade here. So you'd enter to go short at 76. Remember, once again, you could be trading the options. It, it wouldn't matter if you're trading the actual stock. If your account size wasn't large enough to actually go short stock, you could simply purchase the puts. It makes no difference. So uh, you would uh, you know, buy a put at 76 and you would exit the put once the stock reached 70, okay? Now, it's a nice one to two risk reward ratio on the actual stock. And now how would you protect your profits? Well, you'd use that 50% suggestion again. So once we went down half the distance to our exit point, that's where we would move the stop down to 76. So after three days, you've gained actually a profit of three points. You're not going to exit yet. Now, if you want it to be a little bit more advanced, if you're trading multiple shares or contracts, you could sell half your position here, move your stop to unchange, and let the rest come down to 70. Either way, you're going to protect yourself by moving your stop, either mental or physical stop, here at 76. And the only thing left to do is watch the trade unfold. This is where we get into the boring phase. You see how when you add structure to your trading, it gets to be very boring, but once again, you're in charge. Most traders trade without structure. They say, okay, well, I'm gonna buy here. Well, where are you exiting? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get a feel of when to get out. I kind of think it should go somewhere around these levels. I'll wait and see. Well, where are you gonna get out if you're wrong? Well, I'll just know when I'm wrong. There's no structure at all. This is why traders fail. So let's wait and see what happened. And a day or two later, guess what? We have a very nice profit of six points in just about a week's time. Why? Because we're below the 50. We put the odds in our favor by being on the right side. Now, sure, we had a very nice bounce, but most likely you would have entered too soon, and there's just a multitude of, of reasons why odds are not in your favor when you're buying below the 50. If price were above the 50 and your strategy gave you a buy signal, well, that's fine. The odds are in your favor because the overall trend is up. But if the overall trend is down by price being below the 50, just be in sync with it. Don't fight it. You know, you do what the market wants to do rather than what some guy in a chat room is telling you. Now, people say, well, Steve, sometimes I get out and I got a nice profit, but how can I increase my odds even more with one of our proprietary tools? This is a tool I was introduced to some 40 years ago on the trading floor, and it was a calculation, something we had to do by hand. It was very cumbersome. It wasn't difficult. It was just cumbersome. But with the... the uh, accessibility now of high-speed uh, computers and programmers, we've been able to access the PET-D on whatever time frame, whatever market we're trading, because we've programmed it into a color bar tool. So it's a proprietary color bar tool, and it's designed to, one, confirm your entry signals so that in conjunction with the 50-period moving average, you know you're in sync with the trend and the short-term trend, and two, it's designed to keep you in winning trades. So even if you have this nice one to two risk reward ratio, let's say you want to stay in a little bit longer. The pet D can do that. Not guaranteed to get you in at the bottom of the top, but it will at times keep you in these very long trending moves. Let me show you some examples here. Here's an older example of HRL. We're above the 50. And let's say you change your way of trading around. You say, hey, Steve, this stuff really works. These four things you taught me, I'm starting to do pretty well. But you know, Sometimes I get out, sure, it's a one to two risk reward ratio, but man, then I leave a lot of money on the table. How can I increase my odds even more? Well, let's say you would have gotten in this trade, your stops here, and then you would have exited for a nice nearly four point gain, all right? How could the pet D have helped us? Well, once we add the color bar tool, we see that the pet D colored this bar green, so your setup bar was confirmed, and you exited but look at the colors of the bars. They're still green. So the pet D is telling you that the market still wants to go up. It's translating. It's not a predictive tool. It's not an indicator telling you what you should do. It simply translates what the market wants to do. So then you can decide what you want to do based off that translation. So at this point, the market is being translated that it wants to go higher. So look what happened. It went up another 11 and nearly a half points had you simply waited for the first red bar and that would have been your exit point. So instead of getting out at 71.55, you could have ridden it an extra nearly eight points higher, okay? This is what the pet D can do. So what a lot of our traders like to do is enter here, sell a portion of their position at the standard exit, whatever it's based on, and then let the pet D tell them where to exit because the pet D is just simply translating what the market wants to do. How about 
on the short side. Well, here is an example of using the technique I just shared with you. You decide to sell here, you place your stop, and we get down to the level of exit. You have a nice trade where you make a quick four and a half points. Great, great trade, okay? But what if you wanted and thought, according to your analysis or your strategy, that it was going much, much lower? Well, let's see if the pet D could have helped us. First of all, once we had the color bar tool, we see that it confirmed our entry. See how the bars are red? And it continued to stay red. So if we wanted to, we could have covered half our position here and remained short the entire time to capture another uh, more points here. So we could have had a potential 15-point gain. How about this example in PSA? Now, we know that this is an expensive stock. You could have applied options to this. It makes absolutely no difference. Simply follow the rules, but instead of purchasing the stock, you could purchase a call or, pr or put together some type of spread, credit spread, where it would help you on the long side. All right. Now, using the standard rules of your strategy, you could have had a nice seven and a half point gain roughly. But if we applied the pet D, we see that this entry was confirmed. The bar was colored green and the bars are still green. So maybe you had two contracts, two options. You sold your first option here. You let the rest run. And on the very first red bar, you exited, okay? You could have had a total of 18 points altogether. Now remember, some of the best trades are the trades you never take. This is how the pet D can at times help you. Let's say you use the same technique I share with you today. You say, well, okay, Steve, you said only buy if you're above the 50. Okay, so I got a nice signal here to go long according to my strategy. Here's where I should be exiting. Okay, I'll put a little marker here at the halfway point. I've got my stop in place. Now, according to what Steve says, I'm guaranteed to have a winner, right? Absolutely not. We're not guaranteeing anything. We're just trying to put the odds in our favor, but we know it's perfectly normal to have losses every once in a while. We're just trying to see if we can put more odds in our favor. And how can we do that? By adding the pet D. Because remember, we said the pet D should confirm what you want to do once you're into the trade, okay? So our buy setup bar, should be colored green if this was confirmed by the pet d so let's add the pet d and see what the bar was colored well at this point here the bars all started to be colored red so the pet d is telling you i want to go lower according to my translation ebay wants to go lower so would you want to buy it even if all the other rules are met this short-term identifier and confirmation tool is telling you eh, there's not so many odds in your favor with this particular tool. It would be much better if this were colored green. So you now have the option. Remember, once again, the choice is yours. We're not telling you how to trade. It's your choice. You can decide whether or not you want to take this trade. But guess what? It would have been a good idea to listen to the pet D because look what happened. Okay? You see how the pet D can give you information rather than some guy in a chat room or some guy on TV. Why? Because the pet D is translating what the market wants to do. And remember, as I stated earlier, the only thing we should ever be listening to is the market. Now, here's some more current setups that came in uh, starting this year and, and uh, went all the way, panned out until this last week. Here's an actual sell signal by one of our strategies to go short. You would have sold here. You could have exited for a two to one or one to two risk reward ratio right here. All right. But how, what if we wanted to increase our odds for consistency? Well, we'd add the pet D. And as we can see here, based on this bar, the setup bar, this is the bar that told us to go short. It's red. So the pet D is saying, you know, I, you're okay. You're, we're not guaranteeing you, but the odds are in your favor that it's going to go lower because the market wants to go lower. So you sell on the next bar, you go short. Now this is an $80, $90 stock, you could have purchased puts. And in a month later, you've got a 13 point gain. Not a bad trade, but look at all the bars. The bars continue to be red. The pet D signaled that a good month earlier, at the beginning of January, but it continues to be red. So if you wanted to stay in the trade longer, the odds are still in your favor and you could have captured an extra 10 points roughly on the downside. And the same thing can work to the upside. Here's Facebook coming into uh, February of just this past month. Now, Facebook was going straight up. Here's the way most people trade. They say this thing has gone up too quick, too fast. It's all the indicators are over, uh, overbought. Uh, the chat room I go to follows institutions. And all the institutions are selling here. That's why we've made this kind of a double top. And they're shorting it. So I like to follow what those guys are doing. And uh, so I'm going to sell here. This is the way most traders trade. This is why most traders fail. Now, we are above the 50, even though you can't see it. 
And if you wanted to buy here, well, here's your entry, your stop. And if you wanted to make double what your uh, uh, risk was, well, you would have exited 135. But how can we give ourselves added assurance? Well, we add the pet D just to make sure that this bar is green. And once we add it, we see that we've been green the entire time. There's no reason to even short. We're above the 50 period moving average. And the pet D is translating that all the bars are green. So why would you want to short into that? If a stream is going in one direction, why would you want to swim upstream? Just to prove to the world that you're right? That's silly. Just use the, the trend to go with the direction of the, of the flow. It's the same way with trading. If the market wants to go one direction, who are we to say, well, no, you're going to stop right here. Just jump on board and do whatever the market wants to do. That's how you become a consistent trader. Not by listening to outside sources tell you what the market's going to do. The pet D doesn't tell you what the market is going to do. It simply translates what it's saying at that particular moment. It could change any time. But according to this, you're okay for right now. So you enter at 129.50. And in a week or so, you've made a quick five and a half points. Not bad. But let's say you wanted to stay in longer. Well, the pet D is still translating that the market wants to go higher. So who are you to say that's going to top out? And as you can see here, you could have gained another four or five points by simply holding on to Facebook onto this last week. So let's review before we go to the question and answer portion. Here's what you learned today. Remember, we are an educational company. Even though you don't want to necessarily uh, become a member of our courses, we try to give you something you can start trading with as soon as we conclude this webinar. That's where we differ uh, with all the other presentations you may see. Once you leave one of our presentations, we always leave you with a bit of education that you can apply to your current trading, regardless if you decide to join our family or not. So here's what we taught you. We taught you the number one question you should never ask yourself. And, and you know, think of it. How many times have you said this to yourself? What do I do now? Boy, this isn't working the way I thought. What should I do? I'm going to call up my friend or that guy, my broker, and ask him, what does he think of the markets? Never ask yourself that because you're telling everyone, you're telling the markets, I don't know what to do. Remember, would a lawyer in the middle of a courtroom say, hey, everyone, what do I do now? What do you think I should do? It's silly. You are no different. Trading is a profession. It's not just a hobby. You should never ask yourself with your hard-earned money, well, what do I do? If you're at that point of asking yourself in that, you should never be trading. You should be studying how to trade, but you should never ask yourself that. Now, what you should ask are only four questions, okay? These are the only four questions you should ever ask, and that is, am I on the right side of the market? It's not that difficult. All you have to do is apply the 50-period moving average. If you have a buy scenario, I don't care what strategy is based off, but if your strategy or system generates a buy, it should be above the 50. Your entry should be above the 50-period moving average. If you have a sell setup, it should only be below. Second question is, once you know where you're going to be entering, don't ask yourself, well, boy, I'm going to exit here. I'm going to make a lot of money. This is where I'm going to get out. No. Ask yourself, where do I place my initial stop? Because I could be dead wrong. Even though I'm on the right side of the market, things can change. The market is very fluid. It can change its direction whenever it wants to. So I have to protect myself by putting a stop, either a mental or physical stop, and say, where do I get out if I'm wrong? Okay. And then if you'd like to, you can double that amount of risk and that's where your profit target's going to be. A lot of the students don't know where to get out. They'll say, well, you know, I'll go by feel. I'll, I'll, I'll get an idea. That's silly. You should never trade that way. You should have an idea in place. A simple generic way to do that is simply double what your risk is. If you're risking five points, get out at 10. If you're risking two points, get out at four. Okay. And then lastly, how do I protect my profits? Many times you'll see that you're going in the right direction. You're all excited. You feel happy. You say, boy, I've finally gotten it together. You wake up the next morning and things are going to reverse. Okay, some news came out. Something happened overnight. Uh, just anything. So protect yourself. If you get roughly half the distance to where you want to exit, move your stop to unchanged. Protect yourself. You don't ever want to see a winning scenario turn into a losing scenario. Okay. And then lastly, we told you a great way to increase your, increase your odds with trading even more by adding the pet D. I have used this on a 
daily basis for the last four decades, and it has helped me tremendously with my own personal trading. I was using it before this presentation for trading this morning, and on a on a short uh, intraday uh, trading uh, method, all the bars have been green the entire day uh, coming up to the uh, presentation. I don't know what happened. Uh, something may have happened while we, I've been speaking, but coming into the day, all the bars were green, so I knew I wasn't going to short anything until the market changed. Now, while I've been speaking, the pet D may have changed to red. I don't know, but We'll find out as soon as this concludes. Now, here's the uh, a special we have for all the attendees today, and thank you for joining us today. We're gonna offer you the pet D, okay? Many of you have been, may be saying, boy, Steve, I have a strategy that works great. These things you taught me, I can start using today, but I would love to have the pet D. Well, the pet D is something, once again, that is probably our most popular tool in, uh, that we have with all of our students in over 110 countries around the world and in every state in the United States. We call it our roadmap for any market because it really is a roadmap because it, what it does it do? It listens to the market you're trading. It's not a predictive tool. I don't want to tell you that, that it's going to tell you, well, you should be exiting here and you should be entering here. It just confirms whatever strategy you're trading, if you uh, have the odds in your favor, and then it tells you at that particular moment what the market wants to do. So with this information, then you can decide what you want to do because you're ultimately making the decisions, not the pet D. It's a proprietary color bar algorithm. We include the add-on. So with your uh, charting software, it will uh, tell you what the colors are. It will automatically change the colors with this add-on. Okay. This comes in the course. It comes with two continuation trading techniques. Uh, these are two techniques for uh, telling you how to trade in, uh, in continuation patterns. It also gives you two pullback trading pattern techniques, all right? Lastly, it comes with a trailing stop technique. So there's tons of information. Remember, this can be applied to any market, any strategy, and any time frame. But we're not concluding there. You're also getting mentoring correspondence with me, all right? Someone who's been using this for 40 years is able to work with you every step of the way. So that if you have any questions, if something uh, is a little difficult to understand within the course that we send you, you can always email me through mentoring correspondence and email correspondence, and I'll answer your questions right away. All right, now, uh, we have hedge funds that are interested in, in uh, licensing this from us. Uh, people have told us that the Pet D is worth tens of thousands of dollars. Here's what we're doing for all of our attendees today. We're dropping the full-time application and course down to $29.95, but we're also offering payment plans. So we realize that some of you can't come up with that lump sum altogether. Well, guess what? You can contact my sister site, Pro Trader Strategies, call them. They can put together a small deposit payment plan for, with you, and you can just be up and running in a matter of moments by putting together a small deposit and then having a small monthly payment plan. All right, but this is for a limited time only. This is the best way to get the uh, pet D by using this payment plan. But remember, it's only for a limited time. So in order to take advantage of this great, great deal, here's how to do it. Go to Pro Trader Strategies. They handle all of my courses, all of my information, and all of my strategies. You can email them at trading at protraderstrategies.com. Probably the best thing to do would be to call them to structure that payment plan. You can be up and running as soon as possible by calling 310 598-6677. They can send you the course. They can send you the add-on. In fact, we have a great tech support that puts together everything for you. It can install the add-on for you, and you can be up and running in a matter of moments. It can put together everything on your charting software platform, and the uh, trading consultants at ProTrader Strategies can put that uh, payment plan together uh, for you with a small uh, deposit. You can be up and running right away. So here's all the information. As you see, the link to go to that sign up page is right there on the bottom, but this is not a live link. If you want to uh, simply go to the sign up page, if you look on the chat box on the go to webinar column on the far right, a live link has been posted. All you have to do is simply click that on in the far right hand corner and it will take you to the information sign up page uh, if you'd like to take advantage to get more information. But remember, if you want to structure a payment plan, Contact Pro Trader Strategies. No obligation at all. Get more information about the Pet D, about uh, what markets, about what uh, software you can use it with. Now, I'm going to uh, leave all this information up here. As I stated, the last 10 or 15 minutes will reserve simply for questions, okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, Satya is asking, thank you, Steve, for the presentation. Uh, question, if the Pet D is green entry, would you exit the trade if a bar turns red after a couple of days before the profit target is reached? Well, remember, once again, I'm not going to tell you how to trade. It's up to you. 
Here's the way we put it together with a number of our strategies. All of our strategies have entry points, stop placement, and exit points, which you should have as well, which I tried to teach you today. Now, there, you know, our entry and exits are, are, are all different. So I'm not going to tell you that they're all based on the information I gave you today. I gave you just very standard entry, exit, and stop placement techniques. But all of ours come with different variable uh, exit points, entry points. And so we have different ways to trade it. Plus, we have different ways to protect yourself. So it's difficult for me to say because it depends on what strategy you're trading. It depends on where your exit point is. That obviously is one way to trade it, but you do not. You know, there's no reason why you have to use that. One of the best ways we say to trade it is to use your standard exit first and then let the trade unfold by applying the pet D. So in this case, even if the pet D turned red on the very first bar, you would not exit the trade, okay? You would, uh, you know, still wait for it to unfold and then you would, uh, you know, wait for it. Uh, hopefully you'd get out with a profit and then you'd wait to see what the pet D does. So you would initially use the pet D to confirm your entry. And then once you're in the entry and it's being confirmed, then you just wait for your exit to be hit. If it's not hit, well, you're going to get stopped out at a small loss either way, okay? So there's a number of ways. This is all part of the course. You know, I, that's just a brief explanation, but there are many more different explanations. It all depends on what market you're trading. It all depends on how you like to trade. It all depends what your risk parameters are. Remember, no two traders should ever trade alike. This is why we don't teach nor do we trade systems because systems are 100% rule-based. That means regardless of the environment, regardless of the market, regardless of the time frame, you have to enter the trade the same way. We don't believe that. We believe that you should be responsible and a part of the process. That's why we only teach and trade strategies. Now, strategies are still rule-based, but they're 70% rule-based, and then they are a lot about 25 or 30% for discretion and insight. People will say, well, I thought you said not to use discretion. Discretion is just what I teach you, all the things that I've learned over the uh, 40 years and different insights used to become more conservative, more aggressive. Maybe you know, you're, you're watching the markets and you're saying, you know what, the market is not as volatile as it was when I entered into, so maybe I'll move my stop up to another one of the stop placement levels that Steve has taught me about. Or maybe I'll move my exit point to the 50% level. See, there, that's not just discretion the way you normally think of like, well, I'll wake up and see how I feel tomorrow. That's not what we mean by discretion. Discretion is an insight that comes from experience, that comes from mentoring, someone teaching you things that have worked over time, okay? And that's what we mean. So we want you to be a part of the process, okay? Think of a football player. He kind of goes into the huddle, he calls a play, everyone knows the play, they break the huddle, they go to line, and they see that there's a different defense that they originally thought. So what does the quarterback do? He calls what's called an audible. That's for a slight change, a slight editing in the play, all right? It's the same way with trading. All of a sudden, you may be in the trade and things change. The environment changes. The market changes, okay? It becomes from quiet to volatile, from, from volatile to rangy. Well, then call an audible. Use the things that I have teach you through my mentoring to maybe adjust, to shift, to edit the strategy. The basic core is still there. But we're not trading a system where we have to stick by the rules no matter what. We don't believe in that because basically when you do that, you've taken yourself out of the game. You're not responsible and you've given yourself a great out so that if it doesn't work, you can blame the system. You have to be responsible for all the decisions. And this is what we teach in our courses, okay? Um, Craig says, I watched another presentation where you exited after three opposite bars. Uh, remember, uh, Craig, there are multiple ways to exit. It's up to you to decide what feels best for you. So in this presentation today, it's up to you. We just shared one of the different variables, okay? So once again, uh, you would only ask that question if we traded a system because that would mean you have to do the same thing every time. We give you different options. It's up to you. Now, some of our traders like to exit on the first red bar. Others like to wait for three. Others like to say, well, I'll, I'll wait for uh, the first uh, red bar, then I'll place a stop somewhere below. There is no wrong, wrong or right answer. The only wrong answer is when you do the same thing based off what someone tells you to do. We provide you with the information and then let you decide. But what you're seeing are just short snippets of what we offer in the course. Each presentation, I, I include something else, okay? But you can only get all this information when you take the courses and then you can decide through our mentoring what works best for you, okay? 
See, what, what you're doing is basically seeing, it's like someone who's blind and then touching an animal, uh, let's say an elephant's tail and saying, oh, okay, so I understand. So that's what this is. It's a, it's a, a long uh, type of a snake type creature with a furry uh, end to it. And then that's what you think what it is, but you're only seeing a small portion of it. That's not the full uh, animal. That's not the full strategy. You have to see the big picture and you get that through our courses. Um, Alan asks, uh, as an example, like in the MCK stock, is there a way to avoid getting uh, bought at the stop loss and then the stock returns higher? It seems that putting a stop loss based on the ADR or slightly below, you get uh, bought. Please, uh, your thoughts on this. Well, Alan, there is no, as we stated, I think I stated it about three or four times, there is no guarantee that every trade is going to be a winner. And, and uh, as I've said, if someone tells you that in a webinar or in trying to make you purchase a course, you should run because it's perfectly normal. We tell our students there's nothing wrong with taking small minor losses. What you have to do is put the odds in your favor. And once you start putting the odds in your favor by the things we teach in the course, you will get stopped out less. It does not guarantee that you won't get stopped out, but you'll have less and less of those issues, okay? There's another thing that the pet D does. Many times you'll be in those rangy trades. The pet D will not confirm the trade. And so it will keep you out of those places where you get stopped out with a small minor loss. Not guaranteed, but many times the pet D will do that. As you saw in that one example, there was a buy signal generated in eBay. But what did the pet D do? The pet D did not confirm it. It colored it red. So that would have been a perfect way to keep you out of being stopped out. So we have a number of different ways, a number of ways, stop placements, a number of different ways for entry to, uh, if not keep you out of that, at least put the odds in your favor and maybe diminish your risk, okay? This is all in the course. I, I, remember, I think what the trouble is, is that most people have been, you know, they bought a strategy or system that tells you what to do the same thing each and every time. As I've stated, our philosophy is no two traders should ever trade alike. This is why we don't have chat rooms or trading rooms, because what most traders do in them is they turn them into a crutch. They think, well, the guy in my chat room is telling me this is what he did, and so I guess I should do the same thing. Once again, that's another way of saying, I don't know what to do, so I'll copy what he does. That's, that's terrible, because you're basically setting yourself up for a loss that's a recipe for a disaster, because you're taking yourself out. The best way to become a consistent trader in our belief is for someone to provide you with a number of different variables, have you experiment and paper trade with each and every one, see which one works best for you in terms of making you feel comfortable, and then that's how you get on that road to consistency. But we don't just give you one way and say, that's it, you know, well, good luck. Uh, that's the way most traders trade, and that's why most traders fail in our opinion, okay? Great questions. Any more questions? You all seem to be very skilled traders and have experienced for a while, but you're all going through the same things that most traders go through. I, I just want to say that we're not here promising anyone that uh, every trade is a winner. Th that would be silly. That's like saying every athlete always hits a home run or every, uh, you know, uh, every performer always has a hit movie or a hit uh, album. No one does. It's just not real in life. Things go against you every once in a while. The only thing you can do to protect yourself is to try and keep them to a minimum and to put the odds in your favor, okay? Okay, another question from Kay. She says, uh, hi, Steve. Thank you for the presentation. As always, can I get the charting software that cover uh, Middle East stock market and Pet D add-on included as a download link? I tried Ninja platform, but it's only for Forex and not stocks. Okay, you know, that's a great question, but probably much better for our tech support and pro trader strategies because they would probably answer that a lot better than me. I'm sorry. Uh, I just trade, you know, uh, uh, the, the U.S. markets and, and futures uh, at this time and then just standard currency pairs. So I'm not really sure about that, which which would be the best uh, software. But I'm sure they can tell you that right away because they're talking to literally hundreds of customers overnight all the time that, that have the same question that you have or that have resolved that issue. So just give them a call or email them. Remember, there's absolutely no... Uh, uh, obligation and they'll try to answer that for you and answer any question you may have okay you're more than welcome uh, and remember uh, pro trader strategies uh, they're just there to answer any question you may have okay 
uh, we and uh, if you look there, Kay, I think they may have responded already to you personally. They say they have a way of getting free end of day uh, international markets. So contact Pro Trader Strategies. They can set you up. See, they, they can answer that much better than I. <laughs> All right. As we conclude here, remember, we try to educate you each and every week with our educational webinars just to show you that we are really our goal is as an educator, not as someone saying we have the perfect method that all the other guys are wrong and that you can only succeed if you try us. We don't believe in that. We don't even believe in that with our, you know, our own product. We're trying to tell you that the only way you can become successful in terms of consistency is by making your own decisions, regardless of what product it is. Now, our strategies have a high level of consistency, but we're not going to tell you that they're 100% correct. We're just putting the odds in your favor. The best thing is you have someone here who uses all these that can mentor you, someone who's been using these for 40 years. All right. So, you know, a lot of traders in webinars, they say, well, I've been trading for 10 years now. This stuff works great. You know, that's not enough time, in our opinion, to really feel confident about. The traders who taught me have been trading for 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, someone who's been trading for that long has seen and done just about everything. They know what works in terms of consistency and they know what doesn't. So we uh, here, you know, have methods that have high levels of consistency. But the best thing is we can mentor you along the way. So please contact Pro Trader Strategies, pick up this great deal with the Pet D uh, at a, a discounted price, as well as having payment plans. And then I look forward to all of you becoming students of the Pet D, as well as students of mine. And I can be contacting you uh, on a daily basis as soon as possible. Okay. In conclusion, I want to thank you so much for attending today, and I look forward to all of you becoming members of my courses, and most especially of the Pet D course. Thank you so much for attending. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.